the Buddha was once approached by a Brahmin who said, this business of going forth, training the mind, doesn't really help many people. You train your mind and you're the only one who benefits. Whereas the Brahmins, in those days some of the Brahmins were very wealthy landowners. They said by having a large farm, by having lots of activities, lots of big sacrifices, you benefit large groups of people. And we see the same kind of thinking today. The people who meditate are just looking after themselves, they're not helping the world. If you really want to have a good effect on lots of people, you've got to go out and get involved in politics, get involved in business, get involved in charity work. But that kind of help is superficial. As the Buddha pointed out to the Brahmin, when one person really finds the Dharma, that person can teach many, many others to find something that really is of value, of lasting value. After all, the essence of the Dharma is release. And anything short of release is just twigs, bark, softwood. The real essence, the word sara means hardwood, but also means essence, is release. Because that's a happiness that doesn't change, is not affected by any kind of condition, doesn't leave any problems left over. Whereas other solutions for people's hunger, people's poverty, always leaves problems left over. So this is a practice that really helps a lot of people and really helps the world in a way that other forms of help just really can't reach deep into the heart. So the part that really is essential in each of us. Sometimes you hear that the Buddha was an anti-essentialist, saying that there is no permanent self, no permanent essence to anybody or anything. But he never says that. That's not one of the issues he gets involved in. And then he does teach the essence of whatever leads you to release is of essential worth, because the release itself is the essence. So always keep this point in mind. This is where we're headed. This is where we're aiming as we practice something of really solid value, something that when it's attained doesn't change into anything else and has no negative impact on anybody at all. And we see the example of the Great Ajans, how their example reminds us that within each human being there is this potential. That we're not just digestive tracts. There's something of greater value within us, and that we're capable of greater things. It takes work, it takes a lot of dedication. But many times we're afraid to put in that effort for fear that it's not going to give results. One of the really famous that John was saying that. Before he set on the path of practice, he was really concerned about this, because there was the belief in Bangkok at the time that the time not only for nirvana but also the time for jhana had passed. There was nobody out there attaining genuine jhana. Anybody who thought they had jhana was just deluded to say nothing of nirvana. And if you have that belief, then it really discourages you. No matter You'd put in a lot of effort and it would all be in vain. A very discouraging idea. And then he met a John Munn. And just seeing a John Munn, he said he was convinced there is the possibility that this path is still open and that the effort would not be in vain. So 
So this is why the example of one person who really has gotten results in the practice can have a huge and really deep impact on people around. You see the example of those who have really gotten something out of the practice. I know in my case it was with the John Fu. When I first read the teachings about people going past greed, aversion, and delusion, it sounded like some sort of dried-out husk. Who would want to go in that direction? But there were a lot of good things in the Buddha's teachings as well, so I was really I put the question aside for the time being. It was always there in the background. What kind of person would come out of the other side of this kind of training? And I saw a John Fuang interacting with other people. I, the stories he told of a John Lee, I think examples of the other forest of Johns. You realize these were not dead, dried out people. They're very curious, very. In the case of a John Lee, I would say lion hearted. Someone who was weary of the world, not out of weakness, but out of strength. Very active minds, very inquisitive, very observant, very, very stable. I think it was a John Fuang stability that most impressed me. And seeing his example is what made me want to practice. Said if, and as he kept saying, he wasn't born that way. It was only from having met a John Lee and, as he said, having seen the brightness of the world that he was the person that he was. And so I decided that I wanted some of that too. That's why I started practicing. So when you practice, you're not the only one who benefits. At the very least, you're not inflicting your greed, aversion, and delusion on other people to the extent to which you are able to clear those things out of your mind. But you also set an example. And if you become a member of the Noble Sangha, then you're a refuge for others. We take refuge in the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha. It's because they set an example of what a really good human life is like. They suggest the possibilities of what human beings can do, and it's an inspiring set of possibilities. So this path is something that really is worth giving your life to. And as the Buddha pointed out many, many times, when you give your life to this, you get much in return, something of really essential value. And has a really positive influence on the world. I mean, the Buddha could have become a king and distributed alms, been a very generous king. But his life wouldn't have had the impact anywhere near the impact that it has had on us, because he chose a different way. I remember reading a Victorian book on Buddhism, and they said the Buddha had the chance between greatness and goodness, and he chose goodness. I think the writer got it backwards. The Buddha chose greatness. Not in the sense of worldly power, but in the sense of the greatness of the heart. He wasn't just good. He went beyond good. That's why he's been the inspiring example that he has been to all of us. And it's up to us to keep that example alive, so it's not just a story from the past. So can continue setting an example now and on into the future.